Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling here to share with you on the Total Health Channel. Thank you for being with us from day to day again, and let's ask God's blessing on our time together. Heavenly Father, need your help. Ask for your Holy Spirit. Help us to see things as you do, and thank you for your word of truth to us. Please uh, do exceeding abundantly for it in Christ's name for his sake. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to look at the three messages that are historic to Adventism from 1843 and 44, and they are not what most people think, because in 1843 and 44, they had not seen the light of the Sabbath, and the third angel's message was not uh, a part of that uh, packet when Christ said, you must prophesy again. It was about the first and second angel's message. Uh, it was a time of judgment, and it was Babylon has fallen, and it was a wedding message. The bridegroom comes uh, in the fall of 1844 that went like a spark uh, in the, the uh, explosive idea that the cleansing of the sanctuary would be on the Day of Atonement. And so that message got around the world in two short months, even without uh, telephones, faxes, emails, airplanes, cars, etc. It was they, they did everything they could to help the world be ready. And the question is, will we do that when we suddenly realize uh, the impact of, uh, of these three messages in the very near future? Specifically, the, the, all three are, are different now, okay? They thought, uh, in, in retrospect, that it's an investigative judgment and the, the God is looking over the books in heaven. Well, he, he is still doing that, but when the message needs to be given again, it's about an, not an investigative judgment, but an execution of judgment. Ellen White says in Volume 9 of the Testimonies, are we to wait till God's judgments fall on the transgressor before we tell him how to avoid them. Where's our faith in the word of God? So it's about judgments, not just looking over uh, the books, but judgments will fall. Life and death issues, as in the book of Daniel. First six chapters in the book of Daniel are uh, could have been death for Daniel or his friends if, if it had been wrong. But God spared them, gave them favor in, uh, to the, uh, the king, etc. And so the judgment, though, for us will be life and death issues, and not just investigation. So we need to make that clear to people that uh, death, life hangs in the balances of what's coming in the next seven years, I think, and people will run either toward God or away from him. We'll talk more about this tomorrow on the judgment part of it. I just want to give the broad overview today, and that is that the, the second message, they said Babylon has fallen, and they were really referring to the uh, fallen, uh, I'm going to read it from uh, Four spir spirit of Spiritual Gifts, which is also in the original Great Controversy from 1884, and it's, it's uh, on the second angel's message chapter title. The term Babylon, derived from Babel and signifying confusion, is applied in Scripture to the various forms of false or apostate worship, religion. But the message announcing the fall of Babylon must apply to some religious body that was once pure and has become corrupt. It cannot be the Romish church, which is here meant, for that church has been in a fallen condition for many centuries. But how appropriate the figure as applied to the Protestant churches, all professing to derive their doctrines from the Bible, yet divided into almost innumerable sects. Well, if we're supposed to give those messages again, and she said it couldn't apply to the to the Romish church because it had been fallen for centuries. Now the Protestant churches have been fallen for centuries. And what is the church that has been once pure but has become corrupted? It must apply, I believe, to the Seventh-day Adventist church, and we'll talk more about that a couple days from now on the Babylon has fallen. But um, well, we know we shouldn't call the church Babylon, but it depends which church we're talking about. If we're talking about her definition of the church in the end, uh, a covenant keeping people, no, that won't fall. But the GC church, uh, we'll talk about it again <laughs> a couple days from now. And the final message, the third message given in 1843 and 44, actually 44, was the bridegroom comes. And they thought they were going to be raptured and just out of here. Well, w that message needs to be given again, and it's not out of here, it's not when he comes in the sky. God came to Egypt, he afflicted Egypt with judgment, and that's the first angel's message again, 
but he took them to a covenant and later said, I'm married to you. So they, the, he regarded the covenant as a marriage arrangement. And we can do that. That's, that's, uh, Paul said all those things happened for examples written for us at the end of the world. So uh, I think we, we, in order to be the movement of destiny in Revelation 10 that we started out to be, those who will give these messages and proclaim them will be the movement of destiny and those who don't change their focus from third angel, third angel, third angel, and by the way, they're only making the beast angry at this point. The, when it changes from the time of the dead that they should be judged in Revelation 11:18, the next period of time is the, the anger of the nations. And they will be angered because we've been calling them the beast. Okay, And uh, it will come suddenly, and it's before a Sunday law. Sunday law is the third message, but uh, some other things come first. So please uh, consider this. Study, pray about it, and uh, look forward to another thing. Share this with your friends. Uh, tomorrow I have a book free on the internet on Friday. It will be um, the turkey soup for uh, people who are chicken about end times. And you can go to Amazon, type in my name, Richard Ruling, and get a free, uh, also an app that will download it. So you can either read it on your Kindle or your computer, phone, whatever. And so uh, get a copy. Uh, it has a lot of truth in it, and uh, God bless you. See you tomorrow.